Hi, I'm Dr. Wilson. I'm a PhD molecular biologist and welcome to another COVID-19 debunking episode. This week I'm going to be covering some footage from an anti-vaccine protest in Melbourne, Australia. Now, the things that are being said in this footage are what I would call the bottom of the barrel when it comes to COVID anti-vaccine conspiracy theories. But I still think it's important to talk about these things, because although you might think that these ideas are totally bonkers, and they are, but I promise you they're more common than you think. And people like this, who have influence at a protest, are going to have influence in the future as well. And their influence is only going to grow if we completely ignore them. So you can consider this more of a fun one. But without further ado, let's get into it. So I'm going to let you in on a couple of medical truths right now. Yeah! Yeah! COVID-19 slash MERS SARS-CoV-2 has not been isolated. The genome has not been isolated. We haven't identified it yet. Yeah, when I said bottom of the barrel, I meant it. This is a terrible, terrible claim that completely misunderstands an entire field of science, and yet I've heard it a lot throughout this pandemic. So first of all, it's not clear to me that he understands that SARS-CoV-2, MERS, and SARS-1 are completely different viruses. But that's beside the point. The real bad claim here is that he thinks none of them have been isolated, which at a scientific level is about as bad as claiming that the Earth is flat. Obviously, all of these viruses have been isolated and their genomes sequenced. For SARS-CoV-2, that's happened millions of times at this point. You can even access all of these genomes yourself for free. All you need to do is go to the NCBI website and do what I'm doing on the screen right now. The instructions for this are going to be in the description below. And at the end of it, you'll find the full length genomic sequence for SARS-CoV-2 or any virus you want to look up. This is extremely basic virology, which people at this protest don't seem to understand, and yet they feel enough passion to go to the streets and protest something that they completely have no understanding of. This is obviously a problem, but believe it or not, it gets worse. We are locking the entire society down for something that is supposed to affect people less than the common cold. Less people die than the influenza virus. Therefore, it is not a pandemic and never was. COVID deniers say this all the time. They have been saying it since the beginning of the pandemic, and they continue to say it today, even in the face of millions of COVID deaths all around the world. The simple fact is that COVID has killed more people in the U.S., at least, than the last 10 flu seasons combined. And if we look worldwide, we can see that excess deaths far above what is normal have been occurring in every country that has been affected by COVID. Now, I would fully expect this person or someone like them to deny the data that I'm showing you on screen right now. They would likely call it fake or have some reason to dismiss it. But I still think it's important to show these people this data, have the patience to talk them through it and listen to what their response is, and then maybe have them think through their own response. Just try to engage them in some way. It might not change their minds right away, but it's still important to try. By the people that are forcing them to take a poison. A poison called an mRNA strain. It's enveloped by a protein so your body can't identify it as a poison. I mean, you can even hear in his voice that he's struggling to talk about this. He has no clue what an mRNA vaccine actually is. There is no protein in an mRNA vaccine. It's just mRNA molecules packaged into fatty lipid vesicles. These fatty lipid vesicles are made out of the same kinds of stuff that your cell membranes are made out of. This way, they can fuse together, and the lipid vesicle can deliver the mRNA molecules into the cell. The mRNA then gets translated into protein that your body can recognize as foreign and mount an immune response to. Meanwhile, the mRNA is going to decay rather rapidly over time. Again, this is all basic biology, but when nobody takes the time and has the patience to explain these things to people like this person at this protest, then we get impassionate, misinformed protests. An mRNA strain creates genetically modified organisms by altering your genome. Yes, this is another myth that still seems to not want to die. There are still a shocking number of people who think that mRNA vaccines will actually alter your genome. They cannot and will not do that. 
Trust me, if it were that easy to change a human genome, then we would have a lot more successful gene therapies able to treat a lot more deadly genetic diseases. But we don't, because editing the human genome is actually pretty tricky. You need to have very specific tools and specific sequences encoded on the genetic information that's delivered to the body if you want to have even a chance of having a successful gene therapy. But mRNA vaccines have none of those tools and none of those sequences. Now, when you become genetically modified, you are then subject to patent laws. Yeah, that part is what I meant when I said it gets worse. Yeah, so even successful gene therapies that are used today don't alter your germline, which means the changes that the gene therapy imparts to you aren't passed on to your children. So even if some weird law like what he's talking about happened to exist, it wouldn't apply to your children. It's as simple as that. Now, if you then breed, your offspring are illegally reproduced patented products. Okay, so obviously this guy is extremely misguided, and he's at this protest misguiding others. So what do we do about this? What do we do about these people who continue to perpetuate these long dead myths that are easily disproven by the most basic science. I think the answer here is simple but difficult. Talk to them. Engage with them. I bet that this guy has never had a scientist or a doctor or any kind of medical expert have the patience to sit down and talk with them and walk them through the science and walk them through why exactly their ideas are wrong. But these are the kinds of discussions that we need to have, because people like him, people like the ones at this anti-vaccine protest, they have no trust in science. They have no trust in government anymore. And I kind of understand. You know, COVID has not been easy for a lot of people. The science messaging has not been great. And the governments have not really handled it the, the best everywhere. So, of course, people have very valid reasons to want to protest, but when they bring such a huge misunderstanding of science into the equation, then they're just not taken seriously, and it moves everybody back 10 steps. This kind of misinformation doesn't help the people who are actually struggling from COVID restrictions. It doesn't help the people who are actually suffering from COVID, and it doesn't help the scientists and doctors who are trying to end the pandemic. So for those of you who encounter people who might subscribe to this kind of misinformation, I know it can be tiring and difficult to deal with them in an empathetic and patient way. I even have trouble with it myself sometimes. But just know that having even one honest conversation can really make a difference, even if you don't see it right away. So if you're someone who encounters people who subscribe to misinformation, my ask to you is just try your best to have an empathetic conversation with them. And if you subscribe to Conspiracy Theories yourself, then my ask to you is to look honestly at the data and really try to challenge your own ideas. Well, that's going to do it for my video this week. I know it was a bit of a soapbox, but I hope you still enjoyed it, and I'm going to get back to more scientific topics next week. So as always, thank you for watching, and if you enjoyed this, don't forget to subscribe so you can catch me next week, where I'll be debunking some more funky stuff. See you then.